I was thinking if I need to make a video about the log4g vulnerability because there are a lot of tutorials and articles and videos on YouTube that cover it and all of them are great but in this video we're gonna start from the basic things so anyone can understand how this vulnerability works and where to look for it we're gonna start by building a simple Java application that uses the log4g library and after we're gonna try to hack it so stay with me and enjoy so the first thing that we're gonna talk about is what is login so basically login is saving information in a files this information called to be software errors for example when a software is crashed we want to save the errors on a log file so the developer will look at it and try to fix it or sometime when you create an account uh, in an application the developer want to save and log your informations uh, in a log file your IP address or your user agent and so on and we can create um, code to perform this functionality but there are libraries that do that for us so in Java there is a library called log4g this library is a framework that make the login easy and it has a lot of uh, a lot of functionalities uh, so instead of creating your own code there is a framework called log4g that makes life easy for you as a developer of course so now we understand what is login and uh, we use log4g to perform this login functionality so now let's start uh, coding to follow along with me go to the link below clone the repository or get the zip format uh, I get this from the live overflow github repository because everything is configured and also I didn't invest that much of time to understand how to configure those things but uh, they are existed live overflow did that so we're gonna just download it and um, install maven and you know I'm gonna show you how to do that it's easy I just delete the main class and the xml configuration so we're gonna do that from scratch because we are going to code our simple java application that use the log4g library all right so just clone that and follow me after you get the project from the github repository uh, open it with the intelligent idea and go to maven and hit install wait a little bit of time that's cool now we are good to go so let's go and create um, a source directory inside the source directory we're going to create a main directory that contain our Java classes and our resource where we're gonna put um, the XML configuration all right we're gonna understand why we're gonna use the XML configuration and all of that so just be patient okay so let's go to the Java directory and we're gonna create a class called login because that's where our simple application will do will log informations let's add the main function on it so main and control space that's cool so now as we said before to perform the login functionality we're going to use the log4g library and to use it of course we need to import this library so let's import it so import org apache login log4g logger and uh, import org apache login log4g log manager so let's create our logger so a logger basically is the responsible for capturing the login information it's just a class that have a lot of methods that's gonna help us to um, to log those informations okay so inside our class we're gonna create our logger so private static final logger and let's call this variable logger equal to log manager dot get logger and we're gonna pass to it the name of the class login dot class dot get name that's cool now I want to log some information I want to save some information somewhere in a file in a log file for example so I'm gonna create a variable called user info let's see those are the user info that I want to log so this user info for example called teen um, uh, city two point Morocco it's just a simple string so if I want to log those info just type logger which is my logger object that we created before and dot info this is info and plus user info so 
we want to log informations and those informations are the city of the user which is Morocco okay so we want to save those information um, somewhere maybe in a in a, in, a, in a log file we are not specifying where now because we didn't configure the XML configuration because with this XML file we will configure where those information will be logged in all right so let's create our um, xml configuration so go to resources and create a new file uh, and you need to call it log4g2.xml that's cool so let's go to the documentation in the apache website and copy the configuration we will explain it of course so this is the documentation and let's search for configuration and as you can see we can use the xml configuration or yaml or json but in our case we're going to use xml it's the the common one so let's copy it and paste it uh, on our file so the first line is the xml line which indicate that this is an xml file after there is the configuration tag with the status warning uh, it's mean that uh, it will contain our configuration after there is a tag called appenders which mean where we want to append or see the information and in our case we want to see them on the console so there is a tag console so if we want to see those information in a file in a log file we need to add a tag called file so just go to the documentation and you will find it but in our case we don't care about that for now we just want to see those information in the console so it's the same thing right what we see in the console is the same thing that we will see on the log file if we log those information to a log file all right but for now we want just to see those things on the console after there is the pattern layout uh, tag basically it's mean what is the format of the information that we want to log so in our case we want to log the time so hour minute second and millisecond and the percentage t mean where those uh, where this logger coming from in our example it's from the main function because we did that from the main function that's mean this percentage t will be replaced with uh, with the main function and this is the level so we will talk about levels later and there is the logger which is the class name and the message uh, and the new line the message is the message that we pass for example in our uh, code we pass a message which is uh, user info now we close the console tag and as I said before we can add another appender which is file so we can log information to a file but we don't need that for now we want just to see the output on the console so we close the appender tag and we open a logger tag so for now the logger is the root uh, basically uh, that's mean that the configuration that I made for the root will be applicable for everything every class and also there is the level here so if we go to the documentation and we look for levels there are different levels off at the top after there is fatal after there is error and so on so in my XML configuration we specify the error level that's mean that in the console we will see only the error message and what is above the error level will be on the console also so if I run my uh, my code now I will not get anything on the console because the level that I use is info but in the XML configuration I specified the error level that's mean in the console we will see the level error and what is above this level which is fatal and all of this but in our code there is the info level and the info level is placed after the error level so that's mean we will not see it on the console so i can just change the the level in the xml configuration to info so we will see um, the info message on the console and all the levels above the the info level so let's run our code again and we will get the message that contains the time and the name of the method which is main and the level which is info because we use the info here and the message 
which is the user info so that's cool so now if we add another level uh, for example let's add error so logger.error uh, error messages just like this and we run the code again so we get the info first because uh, it's existed after the error level after there is the error message so that's cool there are other levels as we saw on the documentation so you can try them on your own so now i think we understand what's going on and how the log4g work and how it's used to log information so now we are basically logging those informations or those errors uh, to the console we are not saving them on a file but it's the same idea it's it's the same thing all right the same thing that you see in the console it's the same that you will see if you use a, a log file so now let's talk about another concept which is uh, lookups so lookups is a feature that is used in the log4g library to look for some information from other places for example let's see i want to log some user info plus the java version just an example so i will use lookups to look for the java version and add it to my informations so let's see how that's work so this is the syntax of uh, lookups uh, a dollar sign and sys to point java version all right so you specify here that you want the java version so if we run our code now look at this it's not a string it's resolving and returning the java version and uh, also i can look for environment variables so let's look for the tmp environment variable so we change that to env and to point and the name of the environment variable which is tmp by the way uh, tmp is an environment variable you can go to the search bar and type environment variables go to advanced and environment variables and you will find it so if we run our code now it will return the value of the tmp uh, environment variable so that's cool now you will start actually um, thinking where the vulnerability exists so let's see there is an application a web application for example that where i go to it it's logging my user agent in a log file so instead of uh, of sending a simple request i will change the user agent to a lookups for example i will change it to sys 2. Point, um, java version okay so instead of sending my user agent i execute something i, I was checking for the java version but we can't see anything uh, actually because that will be logged to a log file and uh, that's why gndi come so java naming directory uh, interfaces basically gndi is a lookup like uh, uh, env and sys lookup but gndi is not just looking for environment variables value or java version but gndi is used to look and get data and resources in a java object form okay so for example with the use of gndi we can get java object from add resources so with the use of gndi i can get java object form from servers so where we can get uh, those objects so gndi support ldap and other servers but we're gonna use ldap because it's the common one and you may see it before so basically the ldap server is used to store information about users credentials and the client communicate with with the ldap server okay for authentication or, or stuff like this okay but just think that an ldap server is a server that stores data and we see that gndi can get those objects from an ldap server so if we have an ldap server and we store on it a malicious java object and we use gndi to retrieve that object from the ldap server this malicious code will be executed let's actually do that so i'm gonna go to my attack machine and what i'm gonna do is just launching uh, netcat listener all right so netcat lnvp 9999 so let's go back to our code now in the user info i will type gndi to look for object uh, on the network to point ldap to point slash slash and 
the IP address of my Kali machine. Let's actually get it. That's cool. And the port is 9999. Let's run our code. But before doing that, let's make the Kali window small to see the connection. And let's run our code now. As you can see, we hit the netcat. That's mean that it's working. But this is just a netcat listener, so we need a NLDAP server. So I'm going to use the Marshall Sec repository. So just go to in the link below. By the way, you need Java 8, so uh, check your Java version or um, you will get some errors, okay? So if you have the Java version 8, uh, you are good to go. But if you don't, just check the description below. I will uh, add a link to how to install Java 8 uh, and also how to switch between versions, okay? So now as we saw, we hit the netcat. So let's go and get cloned uh, the Marshall Sec repository, cd to it and sudo apt install maven and copy this command from there and paste it here. So it will configure everything for you, magic happening. Now let's run our LDAP server. So type java-cp target and uh, all of that. We're gonna specify our HTTP server. So this HTTP server, we will run it using Python. So HTTP, my IP address, and port 8888. And we're gonna add the object that we're gonna load from the HTTP server. Let's call it calc exec. And basically this object will execute the calculator on my Windows machine, okay? So what does that mean actually? So there is an HTTP server that we're gonna run it using Python. And there is a NLDAP server that we run it using this Marshall SIC. So as you can see, this LDAP server is running now and listening on port 1389. So what's will happen actually? So we're going to send a request to the LDAP server in the port 1389. And this LDAP server will go to the HTTP server that we run using Python and load the object that we're going to create uh, later from the HTTP server, okay? So let's go to another tab and go to our working directory and create a directory called the exploit and create a Java file with the same name that we specify when we configure the LDAP server. So I'm gonna paste this uh, code here. So basically this code will execute the calculator on the victim machine, which is my Windows machine. And uh, as we said before, we're gonna send a request to the LDAP server in the port uh, 1389 and this LDAP server will go to the HTTP server that is running on port 8888 and load the object from the HTTP server. So now let's compile this and uh, let's go back to our code and change the port to 1389 because now we are sending request to a real LDAP server, you know, and uh, we're gonna load the object calc exec. I forget to run the HTTP uh, uh, server, so let's run it using Python. As you can see, it's listening on port 8888. That's cool. Now let's go back and run our code. Let's make the Kali machine a little bit smaller to see. Uh, to see the request that we made as you can see we load the calc exec dot class and the calculator is executed and that's really scary our video is ended here thank you for your time and if you don't understand something please ask me on the comments i am happy to answer your questions and if i miss something please tell me on the comments also i am still in my learning journey and i hope growth in with you and don't forget to like and subscribe my channel to do more videos like those and see you in the next video.